In the Disney movie Frozen, Adina Menzel sings a song called Let It Go. Her character, Elsa, has a gift. She's got the power to control snow and ice. And it's a wonderful gift, it's really magical, but when her kingdom finds out about it, they fear it and they run her out of town. Um, she sings Let It Go after she flees to a mountaintop. She sings, the snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen, a kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. So what this does is she's, she's beginning to sound sad at this point, realizing that she's completely alone. But then she moves on, she sounds really sad as she sings, the wind is howling like the swirling storm inside, I couldn't keep it in, heaven knows I tried. This is really heartbreaking to me because she realizes that her gift, her special power, is what is alienating her, and it's what is the cause of all of her problems. So there's about a half a percent of the population of us who are considered gifted. It, we're called highly intellectually gifted, but what this name does is it more alienates us than anything else. What it means to be gifted, um, this is a Venn diagram if you go and you search gifted in Google Images. It shows that we're creative, we can commit to a lot of tasks at once, and we have above average ability, and it's sort of all these things in the middle. But what happens is if you also, just searching for images, you also end up with this. And I think this is a better chart because in this chart, we're sh it shows that we are a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different things. And gifted, in particular, ADHD, we are sat down and can said that we have something wrong with us. So we're just drugged. So what happens is because we're this hodgepodge of everything, we end up being very different. And so everything becomes difficult. We have education becomes difficult. Having friends becomes difficult. And I'd like to uh, read two letters today uh, about these two areas. Please excuse me for reading them semi-verbatim, but these are chosen words. Dear teachers, I'm gifted. I always have been and I always will be. To me, this means that I love learning and I always seek more. I love to go in depth and to study lots of things at once, but as a result, I've gotten ahead and I've learned things that you plan on teaching us far into the future. To me, my classes ended up looking like repetition, essays, and just a strict curriculum. In second grade, I'd already read the Harry Potter books, and the circle reading was really painful for me. Animals live all over the world. Some places are cold, others are not. <laughs> sentences like these just don't compare to sentences like, the two men appeared out of nowhere, a few yards apart in the narrow moonlit lane. Third grade was no different, and I caused that teacher far more problems than she deserved. After reading everything in her classroom being banned from the library, I picked up her encyclopedia and got into a lot of arguments over what I should and shouldn't be reading. This was a mere annoyance for the teacher, but for me it showed me that learning was wrong and that trying to expand myself was a wrong thing to do. By the time I entered middle school, life had gotten a lot broader because the teachers began to love, they loved the subjects that they taught and they specialized in it. So teachers, you gave me a completely new way of learning because you would stray from the strict curriculums to give us as much as you could. This past semester I've entered high school and my education has become even more fun. The single semester has profited me more than school ever has. You teachers, you give us a freedom of learning and a whole bunch of depth and it's perfect for my gifted mind. This black hole that is my head has never felt so full, being able to operate freely and absorb and enjoy. With changes to the curriculum at local and national levels, you teachers have expressed that you feel challenged with the new teaching. And I'd like to share into that because it's the same education that you feel difficult to teach is what I have to learn from. Now, I don't want to get up here to try and change the curriculum. I just want to be heard. I just want little changes here and there. For instance, inside of, instead of assigning that essay, assign a project instead. Let us be creative in a way that's both fun and educational. Last year, I built a radiation detecting chamber as a science project, and I learned far more about how the universe works building the chamber than I did researching this essay on particles that went along with it. Thank you for all that you do, because education has been my life, and you've been the staple of that education and that life. As changes come along, please keep doing what you need to, to teach, and especially to support. But please keep being who you are, and thank you for letting me be who I am. Thank you for inspiring, changing, and tolerating me and everyone. Thank you for changing the world. Sincerely, Braden O. With that letter, you understand that learning can be hard. It's only a stereotype that we don't get any help because, in fact, sometimes we need even more help because we show many of these traits. Education can be a burden, but it's dwarfed by the burden of trying to fit in because just like the fact that Elsa had this power, 
other people began to fear it. They began to fear that she was better than them. And what it does is it alienates us and it makes us look, we become targets on the high school playground. So this next letter, I'd like it to be heard not only from my perspective, but from the perspective of anyone who's being left out or lonely. Dear peers, hey, I'm gifted and that's all there is to it, but I'm not, however, better than you. In fact, I've always felt inferior to you. Being gifted means seeing the world differently. It means seeing things that few others can and relating to people who are either older or younger than me. To you, I look like a smart person, an overachiever, and sometimes a show off. And for these things, I would really like to apologize because being gifted means being able to excel intellectually, but to me, it means suffering socially. I've always been different. I've always been the odd one out. And in elementary school, that meant I was the one who was bullied. I was not allowed to play with you, and I was given the angry looks and not allowed to participate in group projects or sit at lunch tables. I felt like I was battered from all sides, and the way I responded was by cutting myself off from you. For years, I minimized contact by simply being unfriendly, which is something that I believe was a mutual feeling. I solved the pain problem by trying to shut off my emotions, and I began to disregard others, which was terrifying not only to you, but also to me. I felt nothing, really. When I was insulted, I merely shrugged the insults off, but when I was loved, I merely shrugged that off. I just ignored everything. And it's this that I'm asking for your help, because I've always been socially inept, and I've never needed or even wanted friends. But now that I'm in high school, I find myself trying to discover who the person under the armor is. I've been struggling to just understand other people. It's really overwhelming for a gifted person who's always dealt with people and emotions by disregarding them, because part of being gifted is experiencing the world at a much deeper level. We experience a lot stronger emotions and we see a lot more things. So it's like thinking your own emotions, but doubling or tripling them. You find yourself needing friends to talk to as you live with quote unquote normal emotions. So just imagine how much help I need dealing with the extreme emotions that are my entire life. At this point, I want to say that I don't want a lot of friends. I only need two or three who can cope with me and I with them. I want you as my peer group to be open to my ideas, to be kind, and especially to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because when we're gifted, we're pretty results oriented, and we need feedback in order to change. Just stop me after class or in the hall. Tell me that I insulted you or that I said something that you took personally. I still don't understand what to you is everyday life, so just talk to me. I promise that I won't get insulted or angry, and I'll try and use everything that, I, that I'm told. Every day, I try to become a little bit more tolerant and a little bit more understanding of everyone else. So I think that it's good for all of us to just try being a little bit more tolerant and understanding of each other. All we need to do is take five minutes a day to look for a pattern or to find another person and ask them to share their view of the world. Just take five minutes a day to be kind, not only to gifted people, but to each other. Because this is what will make life a better experience for everyone. And I think that this is what will make the world a truly awesome place to be. Yours truly, Braden O. So that's that. Looking back at my life is really hard for me because it hurt. Others hurt me and I responded in kind. Being gifted is hard, it's scary, but what being gifted is like, it's like seeing color in a black and white world. I'm colorblind, so I can feel for this analogy. I believe that the world, well, when we're colorblind, we see the same things as everybody else, but we see them in fewer shades of color. And I think this is like what being gifted is. It's like being able to see in perfect color. We see the same things fundamentally, we just see them at a slightly dip, deeper level. Being gifted just means being a deeper shade of human. And I think that we all have our own different shade of human and we need to learn to respect each other. So as for me, I'm still seeking the haven that Elsa found. I have three wonderful friends now, um, my goat lover, my equestrian, and my water polo player who I'd like to thank um, because they are helping me discover who I am and who I can be just because they've listened. Once Elsa was free, she said, I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go, let it go, that perfect girl is gone. And I hope that one day we can all find a place where we too can stand in the light of day. Because I think that letting each other go, just being able to be ourselves, is what will truly make the world a better place. Thank you.